Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today in the shop we've got this Wolf brand RX50. Now Wolf is a Chinese scooter manufacturer that claims to have better quality control than its competitors. But this particular bike has gone just shy of 2,000 miles and seems to have already lost the engine. So today we're going to tear it down and see where it all went wrong. Let's get started. zoom out just take the focus just a little off. So before we get into tearing this whole thing down and seeing where she went wrong we should talk a little bit about what this bike actually is. Now the Wolf RX50 is a 50cc four-stroke Chinese scooter utilizing the 139 QMB engine platform. Now that's the same engine that's pretty much in every single 50cc four-stroke Chinese scooter including my Tao Tao ATM50. Now, Wolf, being a more premium Chinese scooter brand, does have some visible upgrades. It seems to have a little bit nicer hand grips. It's got chromed levers, mm, very nice. Um, it seems to have the same seat and same luggage rack, but it does have these really nice alloy wheels. And actually, I think those are pretty slick. So that's enough about the uh, make and model of this scooter. Let's talk about this scooter specifically. These 50cc Chinese scooters do require a lot of scheduled maintenance, frequent valve adjustments, regular oil changes and such. This customer was given this scooter in a non-running condition and does not know if any of the services have ever been done. So we're gonna have to assume the worst. We're gonna have to assume that the shipping oil was kept in the engine and maybe that's why um, the engine is no longer running or possibly they didn't do a valve adjustment and, and that's keeping it. But what we do know and something that I can recognize very quickly is the sound of an engine with low or maybe no compression at all. And I'll give you a little taste of that. It's kind of hard to put into words what the sound I'm hearing is, but I just know from my ears, this thing is way, way, way down on compression. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna verify the basics. We're gonna make sure that it has spark and we're gonna check the compression. <laughs> Here's a bad sign. We have uh, some dollar store uh, 10W30 here in the engine case. So maybe it was low on oil when they got it. Um, this is excellent for gasoline and turbocharged engines. I don't recommend using any oil that isn't specially formulated for motorcycles and scooters. Now, motorcycle oil is of course specially formulated to better wick heat away for air-cooled engines. And uh, this is not gonna do that at all, on top of being some pretty low-grade stuff. So, there's a uh, clue number one on this autopsy. There's a, there's also a lot of zip ties and uh, some injector cleaner tune up in a bottle. Uh, this is definitely not gonna resurrect a blown motor. If you could fix a problem by putting something in the fuel tank or in the oil, there'd be a lot of technicians out of a job. And there aren't. All right, so I now have the bike in what I call the service position. I've got the seat bucket removed, I got the front shield removed, and we now have a lot of access to the engine and the components. So, first thing we're gonna do is pull the spark plug out and check that. Right, and we have an NGK C7 HSA plug. This is not exactly the correct plug. The correct plug is a CR7 HSA, uh, but it should have done the trick. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug this back into the spark plug boot and test it for spark. I'm just gonna ground it against the engine here. All right, we've got pretty decent spark there. It's sparking every time the engine turns over. 
and it's a white spark. It's not a very large spark, but it is white. All right, so we know this bike has spark and we already have the spark plug out. So the next logical test for us would be to test the engine's compression. Now compression is how much squeeze the piston can exert on the charge of fuel and air into the combustion chamber. Uh, and low compression can be the result of a damaged piston, uh, bad piston rings, you know, poorly seated valves, anything like that. And there's a lot of people out there who say, you know, oh, you put your finger over the spark plug hole and you crank the engine. If it can blow your finger off the spark plug hole, it's got compression. That's not quite accurate enough for us here at Scooter 911. We like to have an actual number um, to give to the customer and to get a really accurate assessment. And the only way to do that is with a compression gauge like this here. And if you buy a good gauge, it's good for many, many years. So this has just a little insert that goes right into the spark plug hole. It is a little tricky to just get it started. All right, we'll hook our gauge up to it and we'll crank it over. All right, so this thing makes about 30 pounds of compression. That is way, way, way low. You know, average compression for these motors, about 2,000 miles is about 150 PSI. We'll give it one more test. All right, so I'm not even gonna bother testing for fuel at this point in time because I know even if the engine was getting fuel through the carburetor, the low compression is not gonna allow this engine to run at all. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna decide what failed to cause this low compression. And we can do that by tearing the motor down and inspecting the components with a micrometer, or we can use a special tool called a leak down tester. All right, so let's take a minute to explain what exactly a leak down test is testing for. Here we have a four cycle engine, uh, single cylinder, just like the one in the scooter. We've got an intake valve, which blocks off the intake port, which of course has a carburetor on it on this engine. We've got an exhaust valve, which blocks off the exhaust port. This is where all the flames shoot out of. And somewhere there would be a muffler or an exhaust system. We've got a piston that reciprocates up and down inside the cylinder bore here. And here's our crankshaft, of course. So what the leak down test does is we pressurize the whole combustion chamber by plugging a hose into the spark plug hole, okay? Then we can feed compressed air through the shop's system into the combustion chamber and pressurize this whole area. Now we're gonna look for where that compressed air is leaking out of. This is called the leak down, right? And the gauges will tell us how much of the air is escaping this combustion chamber. Now there's a couple different places it can escape through. Say we have a burned exhaust valve, the compressed air would be exiting through the exhaust port, or if the exhaust valve was bent, or the intake valve for that matter. I've seen bent intake valves as well. Um, the other place the compressed air could be escaping is past the piston rings. Now the piston, of course, is a pretty precise machined little piece, and the cylinder bore and the piston have to fit exactly. Those piston rings keep all the combustion gases inside the combustion chamber and don't allow them to leak down into the crankcase. What can happen if the combustion gases get in here is it starts pressurizing the crankcase and it can actually force the oil out of the engine. It can do all kinds of bad stuff. So let's see what this little engine has to do. Before a leak down test can be performed, the engine must be set to top dead center of the compression stroke. At this position, both valves will be closed. If we bring the engine to top dead center on the exhaust stroke, the compressed air fed into the combustion chamber will leak out through the open exhaust valve and we won't be able to detect what part of the engine has failed. I find the quickest way of finding top dead center is by inserting my pocket screwdriver into the spark plug hole and then turning the engine over by hand. As the piston moves to the top of the cylinder, it pushes my screwdriver out. If the piston goes past top dead center, it will begin to travel back down in the cylinder and your pocket screwdriver will tell you. All right, that's the highest point. Now, 
Of course, because I don't have the valve cover open, I don't know if this is top dead center um, of the exhaust stroke, meaning the exhaust valve would be open, or if this is top dead center of the compression stroke. So, uh, we'll hook the leak down tester up, pressurize the cylinder, and if we get a lot of air moving out of the exhaust, then we'll know we need to rotate the engine one more revolution. All right, this is threaded down into the spark plug hole. Plug it into my leak down tester. Okay, so this gauge indicates how much pressure I'm feeding into the engine, and this gauge shows how much of that pressure is lost through whatever compression leak we have in the engine. So I'll turn up the regulator here. And we see this starting to move. Notice I'm losing almost 100% of my pressure, meaning this thing is not holding pressure at all. This, this gauge hasn't even moved at all. So what I can do now is start listening for different compression leaks. I'm putting my hand over the exhaust pipe and I can get this needle to move just a little bit. So I know that we have some leakage coming in through the exhaust pipe. So let me rotate this engine over one more time and see if we don't have this thing on the exhaust stroke. And there we go again, top dead center. All right, and we're ready for round two. Oh, this is looking better. We can see this needle is starting to pick up and show our compression lost. So I can definitely hear air escaping. It doesn't sound good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the dipstick out and see if I can hear it coming through there. Oh my God, <laughs> it spurted all the oil out. Let me take you in close and show you that. All right, check this out. I'm gonna pull the dipstick out. Ah, oh, geez, see that? <laughs> all right, so let's take a minute and digest what we just learned in our leak down test. So as we force compressed air into the spark plug hole, we weren't able to build pressure in the combustion chamber. And we needed to find out where all that pressure was going. Now we didn't hear anything coming out of the carburetor or the intake box, and we didn't hear or feel anything coming out of the exhaust port. So this compressed air had to be escaping through the piston rings. Now if that pressure was getting past the rings, it means it's also pressurizing the crankcase down here. And so when I pulled the dipstick out, I was expecting to hear a rush of air, of course, and instead just the oil started spilling out of the motor. So we definitely know we've got some sort of catastrophic problem with the, either the piston rings or maybe we have a damaged piston and damaged cylinder bore, or we could even have a hole in the top of the piston. Anything's possible. But we won't know for sure until we tear it all down. All right, so we have the top end off and we found our low compression culprit here. We have an absolutely roasted piston. Now you see big gouges here along the piston skirts. The lower piston ring is completely welded to the piston itself. Um, they should be free, you should be able to spin them around and move them. Actually, they're both pretty stuck. And the wrist pin doesn't allow the piston to rock back and forth freely. You can see it's stuck there and I can get it to free up by doing it that way. So this to me looks like it was probably caused by lack of oil or possibly overheating. I can't say that it wasn't a manufacturer defect, but judging by the fact that there was oil under the seat bucket, I would think that at one point this thing was out of oil and maybe they added more and hoped they would save it. Um, the cylinder itself doesn't look too bad. Let me go get that for you. The cylinder is not scored terribly. It's still pretty smooth in the bore. Um, but once a piston like this has been 
forced in and out of this cylinder, it, you really can't trust it anymore. The cylinder head also looks pretty fabulous. I mean, this looks like a brand new cylinder head. The valves are still in good shape. They're not burned. There's not a bunch of oil deposits up here, which is a little strange. The connecting rod itself doesn't feel too bad. I'm kind of wiggling it back and forth to kind of feel rod bearing and the crank bearings, and I don't really feel any terrible damage there. So I would say that this is a good candidate for a top-end rebuild. Now, a top-end rebuild includes a piston and a cylinder, and because we have to replace it anyway, I feel like this is a great opportunity for an upgrade. And the, what we like to do here is throw a big bore kit in the engine. A big bore kit will include a new larger piston and matching cylinder, which increases the displacement of the engine from 49 cc's to 72, 81, or even 88 cc's, depending on the kit. An increase in displacement is one of the easiest ways to increase your engine's power output. You can easily see the size difference between the big bore piston and the stock piston. And of course, these kits are available now on scooter911.com. And when you buy your scooter parts from us, you help support our channel and the content we create. As we were removing the wrist pin from the piston, it was extremely difficult. And I thought this was because the wrist pin had welded itself to the piston, um, but upon closer inspection, we noticed the wrist pin has a bad gouge through the center of it. And that corresponds with a gouge in the small end of the connecting rod. Now, whether that was due to poor quality casting or some sort of manufacturer defect, or if it was due to this bike being run without oil, we don't really know. But that wrist pin is not something I would trust throwing a new top end on. So this is gonna need an entire new motor. We could split the cases and replace the connecting rod, but at that point, we're just in it way too much labor. So I guess that's where this video is gonna end. Uh, and I guess it should end with a reminder to check your oil and change it regularly. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos from us or our projects here in the shop. Until I see you next time, keep it shiny side up.